Servo motors are generally controlled by providing them a signal that goes high and low. It looks something like this, where it's high for a certain amount of time, then it's low for quite a while. And then it's high, and then low for quite a while. And the circuit inside the servo uses this signal to determine uh, what position to set the servo motor at, or how fast to make a continuous rotation servo go. Um, we can change the position that the servo uh, goes to, or we can change how fast that servo turns, whether it turns or what direction it turns, and how fast it turns, by changing the width here of this pulse, or these pulses. So uh, for a continuous rotation servo, a pulse width of 1500 microseconds is the stop position. That's oh, and for a regular servo, that's the center position. Now, generally, servo motors um, accept pulse widths that range from 1300 to 1700 microseconds. Um, a 1300 would be the servo, a regular servo turned to its extreme in one direction, and a 1700 would be it turned to ext its extreme in another direction. With continuous rotation servo motors, uh, this 1300 is equivalent to turning as fast as it possibly can in the clockwise direction, while the 1700 is the servo turning as fast as it possibly can in the counterclockwise direction. Now, it's possible for us to provide it with other pulse widths, let's say 1600, to get different speeds from the motor, but for now we're not going to bother with this um, because uh, we're just trying to make the robot go forward and backward and turn left and right, and we can do that by using these extreme values uh, for now. To see how changing the pulse widths that are applied to your motors can be used to control how your robot moves, change these numbers. Instead of sending it a pulse width of 1500 microseconds, send it a pulse width of 1700. Do that to both motors and record what happens. Does it make your robot go forward, backward, turn left or right? Then try 1300. Again, record your results. Last but not least, Try 1700 on one motor and 1300 on the other, and then switch them. Once you've carried out all four experiments, you should have a good idea of how to make your robot do all four things, forward, backward, left, and right.